See that cross back there? No way that anybody ever gets to heaven outside of looking forward to the cross, looking back at the cross, all the way through the whole Bible. I hope you understand that. Tonight, somebody tells you uh, that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you say, oh yeah, I heard that, I read it in the Bible, or somebody told me about it, I was thinking about it, yes, and I read the scriptures concerning it. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And when you say that, that's the gospel. Somebody says, well, what's the gospel? The gospel is that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And so that's part of what we call that is the whole gospel. John says 97 times in the book of John. He, te he says, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, I give you eternal life. And he says everlasting or eternal 16 times. So John, in John's gospel, he doesn't say anything at all about repenting, but he says it later on when he writes the second book, 1 John 1, 9, he says that we should always, every day, search our heart and repent of our sins. Why? Because by faith you're saved, and then you repent all the days of the life because you are saved. So when you repent, it shows that you're already saved by faith in the gospel, which is 97 times Jesus, Son of God. So Christian soldier, I love you. Embrace God and yourself. Give me a hug and say, I love you guys. I love you, Brother Ray Nichols. Tonight, Christian soldier, wherever you're at, Facebook, Sermons Audio, in Tampa, Plantation, way up north someplace in Mississippi. God has his children all over scattered on Facebook and Sermons Audio. I trust tonight that you do believe that by faith, that you're saved tonight. Faith is mentioned 250 times in the Bible. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you've got to believe, you've got to have faith. It's mentioned 250 times the word faith. And then the idea of the gift of God, that's what we call grace. Grace is a gift, it's free. 228 times Paul says free. And he says grace. Grace mentioned 228 times grace is mentioned. And it's called the gift of God. And it's free, and you accept it by faith. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For God hath made him, Jesus Christ, to become a sin offering for us. To become sin for us, a sin offering. So Jesus had to be roasted in the fire. They had to nail him. They had to spare him. And so all of the pain, the suffering, the agony, the torment, all the incredible amount of indescribable uh, things that happened to him. The power of the forces of evil were upon him. He went through excruciating agony and he did it. And when he did, he's roasted in the fire like the lambs were when Moses said, look, kill all those little animals tonight, bop them on the head, knock them out, and then slice their throat and kill them, and then roast them in the fire, and then tomorrow we'll be on our way. So they did it that night, and in the middle of the night they took off, and then they had uh, the next day, they went right on through the Red Sea, and God preserved them, did he not, for 40 years. So the little animals were an atonement. Jesus is a full atonement, and he, like a ram on Yom Kippur, he died and paid for our sins way back there in 32 AD. And I'm amazed how wonderful, how simple, and how free it is, but how mixed up the whole world is. Very few people on the earth really understand that salvation is so free, it's paid for, and it's all by grace, and say it with your lips, you have grace, you're gonna be in heaven, and we're gonna have it. the millennial kingdom first, so you gotta go a thousand years, the millennial kingdom, and Jesus comes back, and starts the millennial kingdom at the end of the tribulation. So tonight, Christian soldier, we're living by faith. I know that you, by faith, have accepted Christ, so tonight, with your head bowed, just say, thank you, Lord Jesus. I know that you're the Lord. I know you're a mirror image of the Father. And uh, when you do that, you're assured that you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He that believeth on him, this is the gospel. He that believeth on him, the Lord Jesus Christ. He that believeth on him, Jesus Christ, is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's the gospel. 
Okay, that's uh, the book of John 3.18. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16. That's the gospel. John 3.16. Here's another one. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That means hell, outer darkness, that means judgment, uh, would be the result when you reject Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And that's the gospel, believing on Jesus as the Son of God. So we have many verses that teach us the scriptures. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Paul wrote, For by grace are you saved, you're not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Gift of God, by Paul, is mentioned eight times in Romans. It's free. It's a gift of God. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells us that. So tonight, Christian soldier, God loves you. He's with you tonight. He's with me. You're on Facebook, wherever you're at. Remember, it's free. It's a gift. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Grace, you are saved. And Romans 3, 24, justified freely by his grace through the redemption, the payment plan that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 3, 24 is the same as Titus 3, 7. See, that's the same thing. Justified freely by His grace, we have the hope of eternal life, Titus 3, 7. And we're looking for that glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ called the rapture. And we still have uh, Brother Van Impey still out there, came out of the hospital, he's back there preaching at Hal Lindsey, you know. Different ones, been preaching it now for, you know, 60 years. And this is about my 65th year that I've been preaching it. So, we're old timers, and uh, whether, you know, you go back to Hal Lindsey or Van Impey, you see, I met Van Impey way back in the 60s when I first came to Christ, and he had just started out, and so I thank God because he, he, he lived through it. <laughs> I saw him last night, he's preaching. And uh, so tonight, as, and I'm getting older, but I'm thankful tonight that I'm still here in the pulpit, and along with Van Impey and some of these other Hal Lindsey, they're preaching and teaching the Word of God. And we appreciate the memory of Billy Graham and his family. And so tonight, we appreciate Kavanaugh as our new candidate now. And he's now being confirmed in the Senate, Kavanaugh. And you know what we went through. Keep in mind, Donald Trump is here because God is going to put the United States through tribulation. This United States is about to start a terrible trouble with Iran right now. If we don't have a war with Iran, I'll be surprised. But Daniel chapter 11, in the last part of it, the war with Iran is mentioned just before the tribulation starts. That's Daniel 11, and the tribulation starts in uh, Daniel 12, 1. So in that story, there's a war with Iran. So I'm just saying that. Iran has got their ships now. Uh, they're moved in their, their carrier. They moved a, a smaller vessels into Mexico. A lot of things going on right now. I put some of that on Facebook. If you read my Facebook page, you'll see that I'm keeping you informed because I have quite a few different apps of the foreign people of the world that give me the information what's going on with Iran, the Purple Line, Benjamin Netanyahu, and what's happening. So I stay up with that. I thank God for you, Christian soldiers. I love you tonight. And by faith and by grace, Jesus then, he's the Lord. He said, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm the light of the world. I'm the good shepherd. I am the Lord. And there's nobody else. And he says, that I'm the true vine. And you hear Hannity say that all the time. Don't let your heart be troubled. Hannity says, he's on Fox. God bless Hannity, you know. And then he says, I'm the living bread. And I'm the bread of life. I am. Forty times. I am, I am, I am. He is the Alpha and Omega, the I am in the Bible. And don't forget what Paul wrote in Romans, and read your Bible every day, Christian soldier. I hope you'll do that. Praise the Lord. I'm here with you tonight. Got the old King James. I want you to turn to the book of Daniel, would you please? You can see I've used this Bible. This is my third Bible to wear out in 65 years I've been in the pulpit. So Daniel, we begin in Daniel chapter 2, uh, verse uh, number uh, 13. Verse number, uh, make it 12. Daniel 2, 12. Now what's happening is God is given Nebuchadnezzar. He's going to rule the whole world and the whole world is under Babylon. 
He's there. He's worse than Hitler. He wants to kill everybody. And he doesn't know what to do about all of the dream that he just had. He can't remember the dream and scared him to death. And he doesn't know what to do. So he's going to kill everybody and make somebody for somebody. And nobody can do it. They said, well, we can't do it. He calls everybody. And they all said, well, we can't do it. Somebody said, well, why don't you try Daniel? You know, you captured him. You burnt the city of Jerusalem down. You took the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You took them. They're all over. Why don't you ask them? So Daniel's called. And Daniel said, well, uh, can't you tell me the dream? He said, I don't remember the dream. He said, well, how in the world do you expect? And he, Daniel said, well, God knows your dream. So Daniel dreams the same dream. Believe it or not, that's impossible. That's called the law of improbability. Nobody's ever dreaming somebody else's dream. And so Daniel, God gives him the dream. And so it's what we call prophecy. Prophecy and miracles prove the Bible. So when you predict something and it happens, you say in the Bible, it's called prophecy. And then you make a miracle occur, that's miracles. Those two ways are used to show that the Bible was written and preserved and planned by Almighty God. Makes you a believer. You don't believe in evolution, because that's nuts, okay? That means everything came from hydrogen gas. You know what I mean? And that's stupid, see? But believing that Jesus Christ uh, wrote the Bible and, come, and came down here and died for our sins, that's history, you see? Now, this last week I was looking back, I found out that everybody that ever wrote about history, even the Roman senators, the people that were running the Senate for Rome for a uh, hundred years, a guy named Pliny and Tacitus, they wrote all about how that, yes, there was a guy named Jesus. And they, I heard this week, I read an article, they found a little boat just a couple of years ago. Uh, it was sunk at the edge uh, of the Sea of Gennesaret, you know, where Jesus went out fishing every day. They just found this a couple of years ago. And the kids are playing in the sand because it hadn't rained for a while and the water receded and they're playing there. And they said, Mommy! We think there's a boat down here. And so they dug it up and so they restored it, 27 feet long, and it showed that on the videos and different things. And so we now have evidence, you know, because somebody said, well, we don't have any evidence, you know. And then somebody found the box that Campus was buried in with his name on it, made out of stone. And so there's been some things that happened to prove that the books that have been written, we have some evidence now that there was a person called Jesus. Because the Bible says, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the rest of the Bible, that he had to come, he had to die, and he was here. But the world out there, they're all Muslims, and they're from Asia, China, North Korea, Russians. They don't believe in Jesus. So the Bible tells us he was real. History now says, yes, they found evidence. Americans don't believe that Jesus is, is, was even in the book. They don't say, well, we evolved and put the pictures in the in elementary school. So in Daniel chapter 2, verse number uh, 12, it's a 2,500-year plan, and it goes from right then, 606 B.C., till Donald Trump. 2,500 years and 20, 2,600 years, Donald Trump. And then Donald Trump right now is the end of this plan. And it's all written right here. So we're looking at this story. So. Uh, in verse number 12, Daniel 2.12, Nebuchadnezzar is angry, he's furious, he's livid, and he says, I'm going to kill everybody. Uh, he says, somebody better tell me uh, what this dream is all about. Nobody could. So they called the astrologers, verse 27. The magicians are called, uh, 2.27, Daniel. Soothsayers are called. Nobody can reveal the secret. And then Daniel prays and says, Dear Father, give me the secret. So God tells him what the dream's all about, all the interpretation, and it's about some kind of a plan for major world government. How many? Four. And this is going to start in Daniel's age, 2,500 years approximately, and then you get to Donald Trump, and that's the end. 2,500 years, you got four major world kingdoms. The last one we're familiar with, called the Catholic Church, and the Roman Catholic and the Greek Catholic, and it goes all the way from Jesus, you know, at the beginning, when Jesus was born in 1 B.C. And the whole history of the world is wrapped around A.D. B.C., the life of Jesus. How can you doubt that Jesus existed when the calendars are all based on 
what did he see when he was born and he died in 33, you see? So, Jesus gave us this, many, many principles that told us that he has to come back when Donald Trump's here, 2,600 years here, and then many other things, especially Hosea 6, 1 and 2. That's a beautiful passage. It tells us that uh, the Jews are coming back two days, Hosea 6, 1 and 2. They'll come back each day is a thousand years, so he's due to come back. And there's other prophecies of numbers that tell us we're at the end of the world, the end of time. We're not making it up, Christian soldier. You just happen to be born at the end rather than the middle or the beginning. God wants you, Christian soldier, to be strong in the Lord, the power of God's might. Put on the whole armor of God. Read your Bible every day. Don't compromise with sex and drugs and entertainment and gamble your way down at the Seminole Indian Reservation. Don't do that. Spend your money and invest it on houses and education, whatever. But uh, remember, uh, wine, women, and songs, and drugs uh, lead to nothing but what we have murder now. 27, I think it was, yeah, 27 cops now have been killed this year. Maybe it's even higher than that. I, I forgot the number, but it's a, bit, a real high number. <laughs> cops are being killed every day. Mass shootings in schools are going on. And we're having virtually everything but a known declared war in Iran right now with their ships are pulling to Mexico. They hate Donald Trump. There's a lot going on in the Purple Line with Netanyahu there in Israel. Now there's a God that is going to tell you what's going to happen, verse 28, in the latter days. In the latter days, something's going to happen. Trump will be born. We'll be in 2,500 years. The end of time from Babylon right here. It started 600 years before Christ. And 2,500 years later, you have Donald Trump in 2018. So the first thing that we see here in verse 31 down to 35 Daniel says that there's going to come four world empires and it's going to be like a statue. Head of gold, shoulder, feet, and that the legs are iron. And then the feet are made of iron and clay. He said there's going to be a statue and all the different parts. It lasts 2,600 years and then we come to the end of it. These four world empires have already happened and gone. We're at the last one and we're in the toes of this prophecy right here. And so he looks at the toes and he said the toes they're made of octopus, verse 35, 235. Their toes are made of clay, brass, silver, and gold. And then a stone is coming. Verse number 35, 235. This is Jesus Christ is coming. He's going to destroy the whole world. The whole world is going to be on fire. And Jesus is coming to destroy the whole world. And then he's going to set, and then he's going to build his kingdom, called the Millennial Kingdom, right here. Uh, very shortly, we're at the end of that with a stone coming, and that's Jesus Christ. So if you look at verse 44 and 45 now, he summarizes it, Daniel 2, 44 and 45. In the days of the kings, these where the toes are, at the bottom of this huge statue, much like uh, the Statue of Liberty in the harbor of New York. It was 90 feet high, 18 feet wide, it's made of stone. He required everybody to bow down and worship. Killed thousands of people who would not worship it, especially the Jews. And who doesn't worship the stone idol? Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's the story today. In other words, these three Hebrew boys, they're just young kids, and they were taken in captivity back to Jerusalem, and now they're, they're required to bow down and worship this idol, 90 feet high, 18 feet high. Nebuchadnezzar killing anybody by throwing them in a furnace of fire. And so when they come to them, they say, uh, well, you're going to have to bow down to this image. And the three Hebrew boys, this is chapter 3, and he says this, verse number 11, whosoever doesn't fall down and worship that, we cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And there are certain Jews, verse 12, 312, they refuse. He said, these Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will not serve and worship the golden image. This is verse number 3, verse 12. Now Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't worship this idol, verse 14, and you don't serve my gods, and if you don't worship this golden image which we have set up, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you're going to go into the fire. He says this to verse 16, 316. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, we're anxious, we're nervous about all this. But be if our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And if he doesn't want to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, okay, be it known, this is 3.18, we will not bow down or we will not serve nor worship any gods nor worship the golden image which you've set up. And so he heated the furnace seven times hotter. This is verse 19. Then he commanded, verse 20, 320. Grab those boys, pick them up, pick up all their clothes and, their, and throw them into the furnace of fire. And so they did. They threw them in. And Nebuchadnezzar comes over and he looks inside to make sure they're there. They're there all right. And they're, they're praising the Lord. And inside, they see somebody else in there. And, they, and so Nebuchadnezzar says, I believe it is the telephony. I believe it's the fourth man. He's the son of the living God. Jesus had come out of the heavens, and there he was, in the fire, going through the flame and the fire, and yet the fire wasn't hurting them. All their clothes should have been burned up instantly. 3,000 degrees, Jesus is in the fire. This is verse number 25. He's the fourth man in the fire. He's called the son of God there. Nebuchadnezzar is so excited, he wants everybody in the whole world to fall down and worship the, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And that's what he says. Now looking at verse 29, 329. I make a decree. This is the law. It's the law of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 29, 329. And here's the law. Every people, nation, and language, and, and tongue must worship the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego or be cut in pieces and your house is made of nothing but crap house, dung hill. And then he promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be the rulers over Babylon. So here you got Daniel. Daniel gets thrown into a cave with the lions later on and you know the story. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're put in the fire and they're spared because God came down inside uh, the furnace of fire with them. Now, if you turn over uh, to uh, this second part, and would you please look at Mark chapter 14, verse 53. Mark 14, 53, Christian soldier. Now, take your King James Bible. Look with me now at uh, the story of Jesus Christ. Nothing is more important on the whole earth and the fact that they tortured Jesus to death on wood with nails on a cross and it was the worst kind of torture that anybody could ever give on, any, on anybody. You see, when you kill an animal and, and roast it, you have to kill it first. They would, if you start roasting a little animal in the fire, that's terrible painful. So uh, the Jewish people, they bopped the animal on the head, the animal's unconscious, and then they would cut their throat and they would take the animal drain the blood up, drain the blood out, pour the blood out on the ground, and they would take the animal and roast it in the fire, and they would eat it. And so they did that just before they went out on a 40-year journey, and it was two and a quarter million went out, and of course, uh, those that, the soldiers that followed him, uh, the, uh, the Grecian, so, uh, uh, Egyptian soldiers, when they followed him, they all drowned in the Red Sea. You remember that story. But here we are tonight. Now we're looking at Matthew 20, uh, we're looking at Mark chapter 14, verse 53. Mark chapter 14, 53. Turning there now, Mark 14, 53. Now here's the story of Jesus being cruelly tortured, worse than any other person's ever been handled. And we're looking at verse 53. Mark 14, 53. Are you there, Christian soldier? You got your Bible and you're looking at the scripture with me? They took Jesus and led him away. And they're taking him at night now. This is unfair. They're going to give him a trial at night. Verse 14, Mark 14, 53. The, pre, the chief priests are there. Caiaphas himself is there. The elders and scribes are there. The Sanhedrin is there. They're all there at night in the house. And they're giving Jesus a trial. And it's the night before the Passover. And they're seeking for false witnesses. And they couldn't seem to find anybody. Verse 55. And verse 57, finally they found two false witnesses. 
And then they, they, the false witness said, yeah, we heard him say, we're going to, he's going to destroy the temple that's made with hands, and in three days he's going to build another one, another temple made without any hands. See? And so they said, well, the guy's nuts. He's a raving lunatic. Of course, Jesus knew that he was talking about himself, that he had to die, and then three days later he's going to come back, and he is the temple of God. So, But anyway... Uh, first of all, here comes Caiaphas, the high priest, verse 60, and then 61, he says to him, Are you the Christ, the anointed one, the son of the, of the blessed? The name of God is called the blessed, that is the highest form of Yahweh. Are you the son of the blessed, verse 61? Jesus said, I am. You'll see the son of man sitting on the right hand of power, right in the heavens. You're going to see me coming in the clouds. Christian soldier, Jesus has to come back in the clouds. And so if he doesn't come back in the clouds, he's not Jesus. Anybody that claims to be Jesus better be coming in the cloud. That's Revelation chapter 11. You'll see the clouds are mentioned and where you hear the voice of God speaking. And he comes there, two doors. First of all, he comes in a ceremony, Revelation 11, then he comes back in Revelation 18, 19, uh, what we call the second door, which is a marriage supper. Ceremony and supper, two parts to the wedding ceremony in Revelation 11 and 19. But here, uh, we have Jesus in the morning now. All night long they kept him up, they hit him in the face. They kicked him and spit on him and slashed him and whipped him and put everything on his head, crowns of thorns and ripped him off. They tormented him all night long, early in the morning, chapter 15, verse one. Straightway in the morning, immediately, straightway. Here come the elders, the scribes, the Sanhedrin, they come to Pilate now. They're, he's in the courthouse with Pilate. He's the head of the Roman government. And he says to Jesus, Pilate asks him, are you the king of the Jews? And he said, are you, and Jesus said in red, he said, are you saying that? Are you accusing me? Are you, what are you saying? You don't expect me to accuse myself, do you? And no, he said, well, are you the king? And Jesus doesn't answer him. He says nothing, verse three. Verse 4, he answers nothing. Pilate marveled. Why don't you not try to defend yourself? Verse 3, 4, and 5. No, he doesn't want to. And then, of course, Pilate wants to get some criminals there, convicted also. So he gets some real bad dudes, 7, 8, and 9. And we're in Mark 15 now. Mark 15, 7, 8, and 9. He gets some bad news, dudes. Barabbas is the worst of all the criminals. And so they get him, and he says to them, you want me to release to you, the king of the Jews, Jesus, or would you like to have Barabbas be released? And they said, Barabbas, Barabbas. See, and so they the people that, these are all Jewish people, his own one, his own family, spoke his own language, Jewish language, you know, same custom, where they eat, they slept, kind of clothes, where they had the, uh, the beards and everything. Everybody wore the clothes, you could tell they were like a family. You know, when you see people that all dress alike. And so all of them agree that Jesus has to be crucified. Verse uh, 14. Pilate says, well, yes, he claims to be the king of the Jews. Verse 14. But you want him to be crucified. I don't find anything wrong with him. But chapter 15. He said, I'm just going to scourge him. I'm going to rip all of his flesh off. That means you scourge him. You take leather, bits of glass and stone, and then you put it on the end of it, you whip them, and then you rip the hide off so that you, they, they bleed to death. It's a way to torture. It's like being roasted in the fire of, of an animal. And so they put a crown of thorns on his head, verse 17. They smote him on the head with a big stick, a reed. Uh, they put on purple robes and laugh at him and mock him, and then they rip it all off, uh, causing him to bleed very heavily. And then they let him out. Now they want to nail him. So they're going to take him now uh, to Golgotha of the hill. Verse 21, a Jewish fellow comes named Simon. He carries Jesus' cross. He bears the cross. Uh, 15, 21. And they come to Golgotha, the little hill there, where now where they have there today. You know, you go there and they sell you little things all through Jerusalem there. But they try to keep it sacred. You can go there, you can take a trip, it costs about $3,000, you can go there. People are asking me to go, maybe I'll go someday. And then they give him to drink a poison, it's called myrrh, verse 23. Uh, 
He refuses to drink it. They gamble for his vestures, 24, 25. And then on the top of the cross, they put a big sign made out of wood. And it says, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. They have it in four different languages, Matthew, Mark, Luke. So, but in here, verse 26, the king of the Jews, and they put the superscription there, the king of the Jews. And they came, they argued, they wanted him to take it down. He said, I'm not going to do it. So then the rest of the trial there, he's, they're going to take him out now. And it's a six hour of darkness over the land. And it's time now to nail him to the cross. Nail him right there. And so they have him up there. Verse number 29 says he's hanging uh, there and, and they're mocking him. You that destroyed the temple, built it in three days, 29, save yourself. Save yourself, 15, 20, 15, 30. Save yourself, come down from the cross. And the scribes all are mocking him. Come down from the cross and then we'll believe it. Well, sure, you would believe it if he came off the cross, he'd be nailed there. But Jesus said, I can't do that. And then he cries out in verse 34, Eloi, Eloi, lava sava shathani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's calling on the Father. God had to forsake Jesus Christ, his son, that you and I could be saved, Christian soldier. Then he cries out and is finished with a loud voice, 37. He cries with a loud voice. It is finished, is written in Luke. Here it's Mark. It is finished. And he gave, gives up the ghost. He dies. The temple veil is rent. They tore it right down the middle, verse 38 and 39. He cries out and the power of the Holy Ghost there is taken out and truly one soldier said in verse number 39 truly this was the son of God and then they take him out and Joseph wants him to have a good burial and so he, verse number 45 43 Joseph takes Jesus body puts it over his shoulder I guess and carries it out in the sling and then he craves the body Pilate gives it to him he said, I, I want that body. And Pilate said, well, I want to make security. So he goes out, secures it where nobody can steal the body during those three days. So he had 16 soldiers there. That's mentioned over Matthew and some of the other gospels. Verse 46, he takes him down, wraps him in a big white sheet, puts him in a stone sepulcher. Verse number 46, he rolls a big stone, uh, weighs 2,000 pounds. It's uh, eight feet tall, two feet around, thick. And he rolls it right in front so nobody can steal his body. They secured it. And then all the women come. You got Mary Magdalene, verse 47, other women. It's now, uh, he got put on the, he died on the cross in the thir a Thursday night. He's there three days and three nights. It's now early Sunday morning. Three days and three nights, like, uh, no, like uh, Jonah was in the belly of the fish. Now, early in the morning, this is early Sunday morning, probably something three or four or five or six o'clock before it's dark. Because it's before the sun came up, still dark. And so they come in, they look inside. Here's Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John, and Peter. You got four guys plus the women. They look inside, there's nobody in there. And Peter says, hey, wait a minute. I see something. You know, uh, I see that headband that was wrapped around his head when we saw him hanging on the cross, that's folded up. That's exactly what Jesus would do. We see his headband, it's all folded up nicely. Here it's laying there. Jesus had to be there. He was very neat and, and he realized that. So Peter explains, you know, Jesus will be there and get in a different gospel. Mary's outside, she's weeping, she's crying. And as she's crying, two angels come to Mary and say, Mary, don't weep, Mary, Mary. And so it says here, uh, verse number six. We're in chapter 16, and it says, "And be not, uh, don't be afraid." Jesus of Nazareth, he was crucified. He is now risen. Behold the place. And they're telling that uh, early in the morning, and they explain that to Mary Magdalene. And then he comes in verse number nine. Now we're in 16 nine. He appears first to Mary Magdalene whom he cast out the seven devils, and she went and told everybody else. And then we have now, looking at where my notes are, I'm now looking at 
uh, uh, John chapter 20. I want you to turn now with me. Turn over to John chapter 20. And we're now going to look in John 20. Because I want you to see uh, John 20, the story of Jesus and his resurrection. So uh, Matthew, Mark, look in John. And now you're looking at John 20, the story of how the different men see the picture. You see, they didn't get together and all copy each other's notes. No. So they're telling you. So we're in John 20. The resurrection of Jesus. He's been there three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Revelation 20, verse 1. It's the first day of the week. It's Sunday morning. Mary Magdalene's there. The stone is there. Somebody took the stone away, she said. Then comes, you'll see who's coming. You've got Simon Peter, the other disciple, John, whom Jesus loved. And then Peter comes there again in verse 3. The other disciple comes. And then there's another disciple, verse 4, Peter, James, and John. You look at all of them. And then Peter goes in, he looks, and he sees the linen clothes lie, verse 5. We're in John 20, verse 5. He sees the clothes wrapped up. He sees the napkin wrapped around his head, verse 7, 20, verse 7. And it's wrapped together by itself. And so then he knows that this was a sign that Jesus must have been there. Who's going to take time after you kill him to wrap up his headpiece? And Jesus would just do that. So then we get here, verse 19. And you're in John 20, verse 19. It's the end of the evening of the Passover day. It is in the evening, you know, sometime about 6 o'clock, verse 19, 2019. The same day, the evening, during the first day of the week. It's a Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. The doors are shut. And the disciples are assembled there inside the house. They're scared to death of the Jews. Jesus walks right through the door and shows his hands to them, verse 20. And he said, look at my hand, look at my feet, look at my side. They were glad when they saw the Lord there. They had the evidence, verse 20, 2020. And so here now, Thomas, he didn't believe any of it. He said, I don't believe all that. There's nobody can raise himself from the dead. In verse 25, 2025, 20, it says, Thomas says, except I look at his hands and I look at his feet, Unless I look at his side, I'm not going to believe it. I want to see the nails. I want to see the hole in his side. Where's all that at? And so he wouldn't believe. Then eight days later, verse 26, who comes through the door of the house again with all the disciples? Verse 27, Thomas says, uh, Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, I just came through the door now. And this is eight days later. He said, take your hand and put it uh, your finger in the holes of my hand, verse 27, 2027. He said, don't be faithless, believe. Thomas said, my Lord and my God, verse 28. And then Jesus said, blessed are those that have never seen anything but believe the Bible, that God created the universe, made plants and animals, they exchange gases. You see, so animals, they give off carbon dioxide and plants give off oxygen and they exchange the oxygen and God's made it so the plants keep each other alive it's God's plan there's no accident it's made by billions and trillions and zillions and trillions and billions of parts all put together it's a comprehension that's far above your intellect nobody can understand that in science we know everything that we piece apart all the pieces of nucleotides that are on the genome, six billion on each, RNA and DNA, nucleotides. They put them all together, and that we call it the human genome. So we thank God that we understand that in science. But then Jesus says in verse 31, 20, 31, blessed are those that have never seen, but believe, and they believe that you get life through my name, is what he said. In other words, Christ, the Son of God, but believing you might have life through the blood of his name. Jesus' name is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He's got three names. That's why Paul, when he wrote all of his books, 13 books, Paul filled up the Bible by using 750 names of Jesus. Three names, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Trinity of God. That's what Paul said. We can't call him Jesus. When you listen to TBN, you listen to those guys, and they don't call Jesus by Jesus Christ the Lord, then you know who is a false, fake prophet. You got all kinds of people who sell their books, sell their, their merchandise, 
bring him the money, they're all billionaires driving around their own airplane. And so that's going on, that's true. It doesn't mean they're not saved, of course they're saved. They are saved as much as you are. But what happens is if you don't watch it, the money and the girls get to you, if you're a man. So God doesn't want you to uh, just go there. He wants you to preach Jesus Christ and the cross, the way Billy Graham did. So, you know, Billy Graham wasn't up there, and he's like many of them that really don't go after the money, that really love Jesus and preach the cross. Thank God for Billy Graham, and also he has one of his sons, Graham. Franklin Graham is preaching the cross and others. God bless you, Christian soldiers. Hope you can understand what we're talking about in the book of Acts. Yeah, we're looking at that. In the book of Acts, Jesus tells them, you're going to 40 days, verse 3, Acts 1, 3, I'm with you, Christian soldier, Acts 1, 3, 40 days later, he's alive, he's shown infallible proofs, verse 3, 40 days, he's raising the dead, he's healing people, and so for 40 days, he doesn't stick around long, he doesn't really say a lot, you follow me? So you've got to keep in mind that Jesus, 40 days of doing miracles, doesn't say a lot. See, everything he said, he gives to Paul later and to the disciples. They write it later. So he doesn't say much for the 40 days. The only thing he does is they all see him, and he meets with them, and then he goes up in the cloud. That's verse 9 and 18. Acts chapter 1, verse number 9. And looking up into heaven, verse 10. And then he's taken up, verse 11. And then he says, i got to come back that way. That's what the angels are saying in verse number 11. The same Jesus, you see him going up into heaven. He's got to come back in heaven, from heaven. Hope you can understand that, Christian soldier. And so Jesus goes up, and the angels see that, and then he's coming back. Over 500 see him there, and they're in white apparel, the angels. And then in chapter 2, Jesus tells them you, before he, he went to heaven, his last remark was, you go and wait on the Holy Spirit to come. So chapter 2, Pentecost, 50 days later, 10 days after 40, 50, and so they're all in one place. And there's 120 of them. They hear a loud sound of a tornado, rushing wind. There's no wind, but they hear the sound, and they're cloven tongues of fire sitting on their head, dancing lights. And they're all speaking in other languages. That's what it says, verse number four. Not unknown, it says other. It could easily have said un unknown, un it's not there. Other language. And it tells you the next page over, they're all speaking in our languages. Verse number 11 says our, and then it says own languages, verse eight. They're all talking in own languages. How many are there? It's the 17 languages, verse number 10. They're all talking in known languages. That's impossible. There's no way it can happen. Nobody without uh, supernatural power speaks in another language. So it's not what you're seeing today. Don't get in mind that, you know, because you're battling something, that that is uh, the Holy Ghost. It's not. That's the unholy ghost. Be careful for those people. Be careful. Because the power is in what the Bible says. So you can't fake it. And nobody can fake it. Nobody has the power to fake speaking in another language, okay? A real language. So keep that in mind. It's, it's their plane. Read it carefully. And then Jesus uh, is uh, Lisa, the writer here. This is Luke. He's writing. In verse 17, make it clear. He says, it will come to pass in the last day. Remember that verse number 17, 217. There are two last days. There's the last days when they killed Jesus and Paul is preaching. And there's the last days when Donald Trump is here. There are two last days. So when he says it, in the last days, you're going to see something going to happen. Two last days. First of all, there's the last days of Israel when... Uh, Jesus was crucified. And you had signs when they all spoke in known language. And then in the last days, the second last days, is verse 19. That's the second last days today with Donald Trump. I will show wonders in the heavens above, signs in the earth beneath. We just saw that. We had uh, two full years of nothing but signs. Now we're seeing all kinds of signs too besides that. <laughs> earthquakes and hurricanes. But here in verse number 19, this is what, when they put all that out about three years ago, when they had the blood moons and all that, and sold the books and all that, we did see that. Signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, vapors of smoke. Well, the vapors of smoke is 
uh, jet airplanes and a little tiny plane. Everything is now making vapors of smoke, and that's a sign of the end. We've had that now uh, for the last almost 70 years. Now we got the little drone, and the little drones are now pretty big drones, some of them 14, 20 feet across, and they're using the, uh, to do war right now. You're going to, and those are the things he's going to say. But most of all, verse 21, Acts 2, 21, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now the name of the Lord is Jesus Christ the Lord. It's not Jesus. Jesus is his earthly name. You get it straight. His name is Lord. You've got to have two out of the three names. Jesus Christ the Lord. Any, any two. That's why Paul uses it 750 times. Jesus Christ the Lord. And he uses it back and forth as you go through the Bible. You'll notice that Christian soldier. So call on Jesus. And don't expect Jesus to answer your prayer if you just say Jesus. When you talk to Jesus, it's Jesus Christ, the Lord, two out of the three names. And Peter preaches that too. He makes it very clear. But the world today, uh, they don't understand that at all. I'm in Matthew 24. Would you turn there? Here is a prophecy that's happening right now in Matthew 24. Are you there in Matthew 24? I hope you are. Matthew 24 looking at Matthew 24. What are the signs that God has given us here at the end? You're looking? Matthew 24? Okay, I'm there. Matthew 24. Jesus is standing and sitting on the steps of the temple in 33 AD. Okay, this is just 32 AD. This is just before uh, he dies on the cross. Way back in 32, 30 to 32 AD. Matthew 24, and he's sitting there, the disciples all around him, and they're saying to him, Matthew 24, tell us what is going to happen. We want to know. Are you coming back to the earth? And Jesus then begins some signs, Matthew 24. He said, well, first of all, they want to know when, where, and what are these signs, verse number two. And he said, well, first of all, there's not going to be one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. This is verse 2. This temple that you're looking at right here, uh, they're going to pull it apart and melt the gold and put, put the oil, the gold in their greedy little hand. Verse 3. And so that's what he's telling them. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen now. And the first thing, he said, don't be deceived, verse 4. You're going to have, verse 5, you're going to find all kind of false teachers coming, calling, saying they're anointed. These are, these are television people. All kinds of people say they're anointed. Ron Hubbard is one of them. He teaches Scientology. Shirley McLean, she was teaching uh, the New Age, your spirit guide. Vera Alden also, she taught the age of Aquarius. Alice Bailey said that Lucifer was God, uh, like the Pope's doing. And then you got Harry Christians going around, long hair, you see, and you got yoga. Uh, they're all doing all kinds of exercises. And then you got the different prophets. You got uh, Fillmore, you got the Seventh day Adventists coming, you got Darwin preaching evolution, Freud uh, saying in, ego, and see where you go. You got all these different false teachers. They're all over the world and they're all preaching false teaching. Be careful, he said. Be careful of that. Many are coming, verse 11. They're going to deceive you. And then they're going to be sinning. Verse 12, secret sin. Uh, they have all multiple wives. They're cheating on their wives. They're drinking, they're taking drugs, they're lying, they're stealing. They love to steal your money and get you to follow them. And these are the false teachers that have been around for 2,000 years. And they're all on television and radio. But the kingdom has to be taught. Verse 14, the gospel of the kingdom. What is that? The gospel is that a millennial kingdom is coming. A thousand years, Christian soldier. That's coming. you got to hear that on radio, on television. In other words, you've got to hear that Jesus is coming and he's going to rule the earth for a thousand years. And then you're going to see the Muslim mosque. This is verse 15. You're going to see that Muslim mosque, it's beautiful, it's got gold on the top. It sits right out on the edge of Jerusalem. And you've got 7,000 that can sit down there at once. They spent millions and millions of dollars. And it was anointed and ceremonial cleansed by them in 715 A.D. It took them quite a few years to build it. 715 A.D., the Muslim Mosque, 
Problem is, it's sitting right on top of Solomon's temple, where Solomon, Solomon had built the temple. The temple was destroyed. The Muslims come. They build the Muslim mosque right on the top of Solomon's temple. You think there's not going to be a war someday? Ah, oh, yeah. The Jews are going to fight. Jesus is going to come fight for the Jews. You turn to Zechariah 12 and read all about it sometime, because there's going to be a war. It'll be sooner than you think, if Orion has any part in it. And then you're going to have uh, seven years of tribulation. Somebody says there's a tribulation in the Bible, Matthew 24, 21, and 22. Now please notice the seven years of tribulation that are spoken of in Daniel 9, 24 to, uh, to 30, 9, 24 to 30. There's a whole prophecy that you can study sometime. Nine, Daniel 9, 24 tells you about the tribulation that's coming. 9, 24 to 27. But here Jesus is telling you, Matthew 24, 21. There'll be great tribulation. How bad is it going to be? Well, you heard about ISIS coming and chopping everybody's head off. The people that are coming are going to do the same thing, only many, many, many more. And they're all coming. And the captain of their army is a bad man. He's a beast. He's called Apollon in Revelation 9. He's heading up the whole army. He's coming out of the bottomless pit. Revelation 9 describes it. He comes up, he's a beast, he takes over the whole world, and everybody has to take a mark in their hand or forehead. If you don't take the mark put out by the Catholic Church, all the Christians are going to do that. The Pope's already told everybody you have to worship Lucifer. The Catholic Church has already yielded himself to Pope Francis. He's announcing it. He believes that Lucifer is his God, he sings songs, Mark it down, Christian soldier. If you haven't read it, you better go back and see what's happening. But he's announcing this, and so it's coming. That means all organized religion, Christian. That means the Catholics, everybody that does it, all are going to take the mark, and they're going to be told it's okay. Don't do it. Don't take it. I put it on my Facebook last night. Don't take the mark, and we'll study that in a minute. Chapter 14, you go in everlasting flames forever and forever and forever. So don't take it, Christian soldier. That's on my Facebook page today. Now, in verse 22 and 23, you have what we call the rapture here. It's during the tribulation, the seven years of tribulation, and you've got to have a rapture. Brother Nichols teaches it's right in the middle of the seven years, verse 21 and 22. Notice how it's teaching the subject of the rapture. It's in the Latin Bible, by the way. The word rapture is in the Latin Bible from 750 AD. The Latin Bible but they didn't put it in uh, the King James. So if the King James doesn't have the word rapture in it, but it does tell you about it, because it, verse 21 and 22 is a rapture. For then shall be great tribulation. Okay, verse 21, 24, 21. Such as not since the beginning of the world. There's never been a time when it's bad it's going to happen, or ever has been. Nothing in the pain and suffering and the torment of humans is like the great tribulation, verse 21. Seven years of tribulation, Daniel 9, 24, 27. And now notice what God's going to do here, verse 22. It's called the rapture. And except the Lord should shorten the days. When he shortens the days, he cuts the seven years down to 42 months, three and a half years. And that's what it means. So in verse number 22, and this is re repeated in Mark 13. Right in the middle, he shortens the days from seven down to 42 months, three and a half years. That's what he's telling them. So the word shorten here is in the Latin Bible, the word rapture. But he's telling you in Mark 13 and right here, he's telling you that, and that's what everybody's been preaching for the last hundred years. It's called the rapture. So when you listen to all the different preachers now, Baptists, Pentecostals, are all saying, yeah, they've been teaching this. I've been hearing them. So it's not something that people say, well, I don't think I heard that. Well, then that means you didn't go to a Pentecostal church. You haven't been going to a Baptist church. Or you've been going to some that are lukewarm. They don't have a Bible anymore and they got an NIV. But, you know, it's very clear here. The days are going to be shortened. And then he tells you, you're going to see other things that are going to happen. Verse 27, he's coming like lightning out of the, out of the, out of the sky. That's Revelation. Right at the end, Revelation 16, 21. He burns the whole earth up like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the flame of fire, and you'll be burned up in Revelation 16, 21, when he comes 
and sets up his kingdom. That's the final end. He burns the whole world up. Revelation 16, 21. And the whole world's on fire. 16, 21, Revelation. And that's what he's saying. And that's what verse 27 here. 24, 27. He come. And then he's going to gather everybody together. That's what it's all about there. You can read it very carefully yourself. He blows a trumpet, verse 31. This is why Donald Trump has become so famous is because people who read the King James and read verse 21, other 31, 24, 31, they said, well, Donald Trump, he seems like, yeah, he's a pretty tough guy. Okay. Well, who else was pretty tough? Elijah was pretty tough. He killed 450 prophets of Baal for all of Jezebel. So he was a tough guy. God used a tough guy. And of course we have Napoleon who put the Pope in jail. Finally he died in jail. Napoleon stopped the whole Catholic Church in 400 AD. If you know anything about the history, he was a powerful guy. You know what Napoleon said? Quote, Napoleon, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. It's printed in the books. So you be a tough guy, you still believe Jesus is the Son of God. Don't have to be bad. Trump is not bad. He's good. He's doing good things for our country, making our country great again. And uh, how's he doing it? By all kinds of little deals to keep us uh, ahead financially. Right now, we just thank God for his leadership. And he wants everybody to go to church on the Lord's Day. Read your Bible. He's a man of God. So is Pr uh, Pence. Pence is interesting, too. That's a subject in itself about his name is in the Bible. So today I'll tell you about Pence, what that means. But he and Donald Trump call of God right at the end, save America. Revelation 3, 7 to 10. Revelation 3, 7 to 10. Study it because it's Donald Trump being preserved through the city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, and that was our capital in 1890. And it's a prophecy that the man who's going to be running the show, Revelation 3, 7 to 10, you can take that up sometime, and it's Donald Trump and America, and it's the land of Philadelphia, our first capital city in 1890. So be it wise, the sound of a trumpet, verse 31 again, a great sound of a trumpet, uh, no accident, and that's Revelation 11, the trumpet is blowing in Revelation 11 when everybody's going up. And then verse 32, learn a parable of the fig tree. Now that's the story of Israel. Israel is a fig tree. After 1948, there had to be 70 years of the fig tree. I'm studying there, verse 32. The fig tree, Christian soldier, is 70 years. So in 1948, Israel was reestablished, the United Nations was born, and then seven years later, May the 15th, Donald Trump goes uh, with uh, John Hagee and Robert Jeffries. He goes there and they put Jerusalem would be the capital. And now different countries, now Australia, by the way, I, I read yesterday, Australia is going to come along with Donald Trump and support his embassy right there with Donald Trump. A lot of them don't want to do it. The United Nations don't want, they hate Donald Trump. Donald Trump is becoming the man that's taken over the whole world. They say, how could a man do it? He's not a Mason. You have to be a Mason to take over the world. That's what George Bush has been saying. Yeah. And Obama and the rest of them. But no, Donald Trump, power from God. It's not him. He has no power. He can't do anything but go to the bathroom. He's a man. God is the one that's running the show, Christian soldier. Get it in your mind. We have a creator, plants and animals. Start thinking about heavenly look. Don't always be thinking about gambling your money with sex and wine, women, and song. Go back to the Bible. Put Bible back in the pulpit. You know, what are they doing? They're dancing around the, the pulpit and they don't even open the Bible and read about the second coming of Christ. Lukewarm, water down, spew out of my mouth. Revelation 3.18 is what he said. So here now, really is so important. It's a parable, verse 32. It's about Israel, a parable of the fig tree. He said, when you see these things, know my coming is at the doors. Two doors. There's a marriage ceremony in the middle, marriage supper, Revelation 18, 19 at the end. And now, as we close this particular portion, I got another place. But looking at Matthew 24, would you look please? His coming is like Noah's day. 
I'm looking at verse 38, verse 37. As the days of Noah, God killed everybody on the earth. You think he's not going to kill you? Huh? I don't think you know much about what God's all about. Verse 37. Like Noah's day. What are they doing? They all have multiple wives and they're sacrificing their children. Okay? Wine, women, song, and drugs, and then worshiping the devil and Lucifer. And in the days of the flood, verse 38, you say the man, you're giving it, yeah, it looks like everything is normal, 70 to 120 years in Noah's day. But then something else is happening. We've got two people in the field, verse 40. And then you've got two people working in a mill, verse 41. They're grinding. And what's happening is they're being separated. One goes up, one stays in the mill, one stays in the field. Why? One of them goes to church and reads the Bible. One of them goes to church, never been saved, just a member of the church, not born again, not the elect. It's the only the elect are saved. As we just got read there back here in Matthew 24, 21 and 22. Only elect. He shortens it up for the elect will be saved. Matthew 24, 21 and 20. Only the elect are saved. Not everybody is saved. Out of billions and billions of people that have been born on the earth, only few there will be that find them. Who reads the Bible? Who is reading and taking the Bible to their church and not going to church where they don't read the Bible? Why go to a church where all they're doing is singing in a, waving their arms? No. Or they're not even doing that. Go to a church that's teaching the Bible. Well, there's only a few around. There's not many anymore. They've all left. They've all gone all of the, we say, gone, gone to the way of the world. So here's two groups of people, some in the factory, some in the field, and some are actually in the bed, another passage, another part of the Bible. So they're taken. The word taken is parabono, it's a Greek word. It means to have sex with your wife. It means they're going to a marriage ceremony. Paralabano, they're taken. They're taken into heaven to the marriage ceremony. You gotta go up there and marry Jesus before you can come back and have a supper. It's Paralabano. And we've been saying that. I didn't write it, God wrote it. Jesus wrote it in red here. But do you think the Christian world, they don't know it. Why? Because you got this little lone preacher, Brother Ray Nichols on Facebook, and they don't even hardly turn the page anymore at Facebook. You'd be lucky that, that they're going to read it. You Christians on Facebook, you see? And God's talking about you. One taken. Wouldn't it be something if your wife left you behind? And you say, well, uh, surely I'll be ready when... It, yeah, well, it's getting close. Getting close, Christian soldier. You see, he wants you to be ready. And if you're not ready, verse 51, it says, I'll cut him asunder, appoint him his portion with a hypocrite. In other words, all be put into the flame of fire and be burned up with not with the sheep, be burned up with the goats. <clears throat> chapter 14, I covered this just for a minute. I'm looking at verse chapter 14. Are you there? Uh, looking at uh, Revelation 14 for a minute. This is Mark of the Beast. Would you look there? Uh, it says right at the end, this is verse 9, 14, 9. A third angel followed and it says, you hear a voice, if any man worship the beast, this is the mark of the beast, 66 on your hand or forehead. You see his image on your iPhone, on the television. You're going to see a baton come out. He's in Revelation 9, he's the beast. This is now in 14 9, 14 9, Revelation. And he's going to require everybody, uh, a baton is, in verse 9, everybody in the world has to worship the beast. They've got to have his image on their telephone and they have to do beast, obeisance to him. They're going to worship him. This is all your religious people, including the Catholic Church. Verse 10. The same are going to drink of the wine of God. They're going to be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angel and in the presence of the Lamb. Verse 11. 14 11. The smoke of their torment ascends up day and night, and they won't be able to get out of it. And the smoke of their torment, it's not something that's instantaneous the way that. Jehovah's Witnesses teach, you know. Some of them, you know, the cults teach. Uh, it's in, no, it's not. It says it goes on day and night, forever and forever and forever. I read that in verse 11. Don't, don't shorten down what God's timetable is. If you don't make it, you don't get out. You worship the beast, his image, 666 on your hand or forehead. It's coming. You'll be required to take it. Donald Trump 
is holding it back. We got a man of God. The whole world's going to go, and they're going to worship it. And I believe the Catholic Church will embrace it because we're being led by a man who believes in Lucifer. His name is Pope Francis. Now, I saw that. I put his video on Facebook. Nobody wanted to watch it. I heard him singing to Lucifer, him and his friend, and so that's what they were doing. So uh, you, can, you can find it written. Different people will try to show you. He don't want to scare anybody, but he's ran around the whole world, sort of one, two, and three. He went around the whole world. He was in Peru when I was there a couple years ago, and he was there. The whole world is now worshiping uh, Lucifer with, Donald Trump, with uh, Pope Francis. And it says the word torments, the wrath of God. God's angry, and he doesn't want anybody to worship it. And if you do, take the mark. Remember it. could be a couple of years from now. And that's what it says in verse 11. It takes the, the mark or the image of his name on your iPhone. And here it is. People that are, that are born again Christian, faith in Jesus, verse 12, they will not take the mark. Here's the patience of the same. They that keep the commandments of God, the faith of Jesus, they will not take the mark. Christian soldiers, don't take the mark. If you're a Christian, you have faith in Jesus, don't take it. Holy Father, I pray that many that will hear the Bible message will bow their mind and their heart and their brain to Jesus Christ and confess Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Christian soldier, tonight, would you say this prayer with me? Almighty God, I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, is a Savior of the world, and I believe he's the Son of God, and I believe tonight with all my mind and heart that he is the Son of God, and that I know I have eternal life through simply confessing that with my lips, Romans 10, 9, 10. Jesus, I confess to you that I believe you're the Son of God. If you'll say that, Christian soldier, say it out loud. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, like Napoleon did. He did it. Trump does it, Pence does it, I do it. Say it out loud, I believe that you give this freely, you love me and it's grace, it's free. I take it in Jesus' name. I accept you, Lord, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Grace, grace, free, free. Nine times, Romans 5, 15. I trust tonight, Christian soldier, you meant what your prayer is. Did you really believe? Do you really believe in Jesus, Son of God? Well, then get your Bible and show you believe it. Please read the Bible once in a while. Every day, in Christ, 